It's Friday, March 29th, 2013. I'm Kevin McShann, and this is the McShann Sports Beat Report. <laughs> make often have a residual effect on those around us as the dominoes of consequence begin to fall and as the Michigan Wolverines continue to march their way through March Madness, one looming decision for their field general hangs over the program as Trey Burke makes the ultimate an agonizing decision to either stay to continue to bleed maize and blue or jump to the professional ranks. The sensational Michigan point guard made an appearance on the Dan Patrick Show on Wednesday, and he says while he's in love with the fan-crazed atmosphere that Ann Arbor has to offer, he would most likely want to wet his palate at the next level if Michigan was successful at taking the title home. Kansas, Michigan. That's Friday at Cowboy Stadium and the uh, star guard for the Wolverines, the Consensus National Player of the Year, Trey Burke, joining us on the program. How's it feel to be named the National Player of the Year? I feel really good. It's definitely an honor. Um, but I know that I wouldn't be here without my teammates and coaching staff. So, you know, they trust me, and they, they put the ball in my hands to make plays, and that's my job. What if you went by Alfonso instead of Trey? Uh, well, I, I don't think a lot of people know that. That's my real name, but uh, I don't know. It'll be different. It'll be something different. It'll probably feel a little weird for a little while, but I'll get used to it after a while. Does Trey sound a little more intimidating than Alfonso? Uh, I think, no, I don't think so. I think Alfonso may sound more intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure, really, but, um, you know, I, I grew up um, being called Trey, so I'm pretty used to that. You know, I'm the third Alfonso, so that's why, you know, my mother named me, you know, Trey is my nickname. Which father of a Michigan player still feels like they have the most game? Um, uh, that's a probably have to say Glenn, Glenn Robinson, big dog. More so than Tim Hardaway? 
Yeah, I think I think I think uh, Mr. Hardaway he may be a, he may he may be a little too slow now. <laughs> I'm sure he still has game. I'm sure he still has game, but I think he may be a little too slow. Did you ever watch tape of uh, your teammates' fathers playing in the NBA? Realize yeah. how good they were. Yeah, yeah, I, I um, watched um, Tim Senior. And uh, Big Dog, I watched it, both of them in college and in the NBA. Um, yeah, it's definitely a pleasure to be playing with their sons. You know, that, that's big time, and um, you know, I, I enjoy it. I appreciate um, the opportunity to get to play with, you know, some some future Hall of Famer sons. Um, if you weren't voting for yourself for College Basketball Player of the Year, who would you have voted for? Uh, that's a good question. I'll probably have to go with. Um, Victor Oladipo, just because of um, you know his all-around efforts and um, you know the way he he plays the game with 100 percent effort, and you know, I think that's the the type of way I play. I, I, every time I go out there, I leave it all on the court and uh, play like it's my last game, and, and I think he would deserve it um, if I wasn't voting for myself. Talking to Trey Burke, the Michigan sophomore guard. They've got Kansas coming up on Friday night. Tell me about the pressure when you go in as a big-time recruit or you have a big freshman year, the pressure of leaving after one year to be a one-and-done. Uh, it's a lot of pressure. Um, it's, uh, if you have the opportunity, it's definitely um, something that you have to think about very hard. It, it reminded me of my recruiting process going into college. Um, you know, I didn't know if I was going to come back to school or stay. But you know, once I t- uh, talked to you know my parents and the, my coaching staff, and you know, got some of their advice. You know, I knew the best decision for me was to come back to school. But you know, as a 19 year old kid, it's definitely a lot of pressure. You have a lot of um, different advice and um, different people talking to you. You just have to take the right advice. How did it feel putting on those yellow uniforms for the first time? Uh, my so- oh, for, the, for my freshman year or sophomore year? Sophomore year. The, the, really the highlighters. The, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it felt real good. I, you know, them are one of my favorite jerseys that we wear. And, um, you know, I think we've, I think we might be undefeated. No, we lost uh, Indiana in those jerseys, but it definitely <laughs> feels good to to put those jerseys on. Um, you know, every time I put a jersey on for Michigan, though, you know, I, I want to go out there and play like it's my last game because, you know, I know I'm not just representing myself, but the school as well. It sounds like you're uh, going to take care of business here, and then uh, you might get paid for take care of business next year. Uh, well, that's something that, like I said, I'll, I'll talk it over after the season. I, you know, I haven't made a decision yet. Um, you know, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what, what where I'm leaning towards. But, you know, in all honesty, I'm trying to just focus on this week and, you know, take each game by each game. Just stay in the moment, really. All right. Let's say Michigan wins the national title. What would that do to your decision? Uh, it will probably definitely, um, you know, make my decision much easier, which is to leave, um, because that's just, you know, that, that's really today's culture, really. You know, if you get that far, you know, as a team and, um, you know, you had those opportunities, then you definitely have to look into them and, you know, uh, make sure that you're making the right decision. But, um, you know, that's just something that I, like I said, I talk over with my family and, you know, try to try to come up with something at the end of the season. You go from Ohio to Michigan. Uh, uh-huh. How did that go over in Ohio when you went to Michigan for college? I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of, uh, you know, crap when I went back home. But um, you know, I'm pretty much used to it now. You know, I got a lot of fans back in Ohio, and you know, a lot of people want to see me do well, but see us lose as a team. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I understand that just because of the rivalry between Ohio and Michigan, but. You know, I, I enjoy playing for Michigan. Um, you know, I feel like I have a chip on my shoulder, especially when people from Ohio, you know, doubt me and things like that just because I didn't go to Ohio State. So I definitely use it as motivation. Why didn't you go to Ohio State? Uh, well, I wasn't heavily recruited by Ohio State. Um, I think they they already um, pretty much knew who they wanted. And, and I think Kraft was already committed there uh, when, when they started recruiting me. And, um, you know, they had Shannon Scott on their list, and I think that was their their number one target. So, you know, they basically went a different route, and, uh, which was fine with me. You know, I had other options, and, um, you know, I think it came down to Cincinnati and Michigan between my last two schools, and I just felt like Michigan was the, was the best situation for me. What do you think of Aaron Kraft? Oh, a great player. Um, you know, he's a winner. You know, a guy that's going to play hard for 40 minutes and um, leave it all out there on the court. Is he annoying? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, he can be sometimes. Um, well, if you if you play into it, then he can be. But you just have to, you know, as a point guard, you just have to know his strengths on the defensive end and, you know, try to exploit them. But, um, you know, at times he can be just because of uh, how good of a defender he is. Um, but there's different ways that you can, you know, beat that. Well, good luck against Kansas. Congrats on being the uh, National Player of the Year. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you for All having right. me. That's uh, Trey Burke, Michigan sophomore guard. Burke endured a similar decision-making process a season ago as he was weathering back and forth on whether or not to enter the NBA draft after being projected as a late first round or early second round selection by the NBA. However, the decision is made more difficult this year because he is projected as a consensus Top 10 pick by ESPN's NBA draft analyst, Chad Ford. Your commitment to the brand versus your own individual aspirations for a future can often be a time-sensitive, delicate, and emotional decision in which to make, especially when you've poured so much into the framework and foundation of building a long-lasting legacy, one that will stand the test of time long after you're gone. And for Troy Burke and the Michigan Wolverines, they've established a young, phonetic pace and a high-tempo identity, which will ensure that Michigan basketball is on the national stage and platform for many more years to come. And Troy Burke himself has served as the national face to the Michigan Renaissance over the last two seasons. And there's no denying the fact that he is indeed the spark plug that makes that engine run. For Wolverines fans, seeing Trey Burke leave after just two seasons as being back in the national discussion of being one of being one of the most prominent programs in all of college basketball is certainly a difficult pill to swallow. But at the same time, you have to appreciate the body of work and all the blood, sweat, equity, and tears that Burke has put in to reestablishing the Michigan identity. Michigan is still a young and talented bunch that should contend for many more years to come. But certainly, losing Burke would be a tremendous blow to the momentum of the program. I'm not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes in this situation. Trey Burke has signified the very definition of Michigan basketball over the last two seasons and will certainly be a talented asset at the next level in the NBA. So while I know it's a difficult balancing act to juggle his love for the program, his love for the fans, and the love for the college atmosphere that Ann Arbor brings as one of the most storied universities in all of college athletics, Trey Burke appears to be leaning towards entering the draft if Michigan can finish the deal and realize the ultimate prize, something they haven't done in more than 20 years. You have to admire the job that John Beeline's done to rectify the program and put it back on the national stage. It hasn't been an easy task, but Beeline, Burke, and the rest of the freshman faces associated with Michigan have rolled up their sleeves to put an identity and a stamp back on this program. So, if Michigan indeed can take care of business in the Sweet 16 against Kansas and advance to the tournament, Michigan fans will have another opportunity to witness the renaissance and the high-flying act of the Michigan Wolverines. And they'll have another opportunity to witness Burke's greatness 
on the hardwood. When this run eventually does come to an end, all Michigan fans will be sitting on the edge of their seat anticipating a decision, which I think most Michigan fans think has already been made on the part of Burke to leave school and jump to the pro ranks, leaving Beeline, the Wolverines, and their fans to replace the heartbeat of this restored and proud program. And they have Burke to thank for laying the foundation for future success. Kevin McShan, McShan Sports Beat Report.